For what? Just because we can receive the blessing, or well, there is a greater blessing, so that the, the fire can keep burning, that we can keep close to the Lord. Because you know what? The life on this earth will finish. It will finish. This body will finish. What I have is more important, is the eternal life. That's where I'm, I want to look. That's where the bride of Christ needs to look, is eternal life. But for us to keep looking, we need to remember. And for us to remember, we the human beings, we can't do it. It is only the Holy Spirit who can remind us in such a deep way that we won't forget. Amen? I have two titles to my message. And if I go fast, just raise your hand, okay? Because I have a habit of going too fast. The second title is uh, Empower the Desert. Empowering the Desert. And I'll tell you why. Number one, we live in a desert. We are a desert without the Lord. No matter how beautiful a person looks, you have heard me say these things many times. From the outside, you know, when you, your eyes look, you pick the most beautiful flower. If your eyes go in a shop and you're choosing, you pick the one that appeals to you. It's very normal. But deep inside, the Bible says, we are all lost, we are all condemned, we are all skeletons, right? Like in the dry valley. That's how we are. No matter how beautiful my hair is, when I come from the hairdresser, or if my son says, oh, mommy, today you look smashing. Or my husband says that. But without the Lord, I'm a desert. And that's the reality when we see it from God's eyes. We come from dust and we return to dust. And life is futile if not for the Lord. If I, find, if I sound like Ecclesiastes today, this morning, forgive me, you know, <laughs> there's still hope. Um, but it's, it's the reality. The second point is that God, in his mercy, Habakkuk says, Lord, remember us. In, in your mercy, renew these deeds in our day. That's the cry of Habakkuk. I have heard of your marvelous deeds. The Lord parted the Red Sea. Wow. But Habakkuk is saying, please, Lord, renew these deeds in our day, in our time. Why? So I can see it. I can remember you. I can draw close to you, Lord. This is the cry. So God in his mercy has remembered us. He has seen the desert. He didn't need to, to send his son. But he remembered us. He sent Jesus Christ. He didn't leave us alone. He sent us somebody to tell us about Jesus Christ. Rex was sharing about his, his life this morning, his testimony. But this is the testimony of all of us. Somebody took the time to tell us about Jesus. Mm. Otherwise, we, we won't be here. Your cousin was the one who took the time and remembered you hmm? and came to give you the Lord. And someone remembers us. So when, when the Lord remembers us, someone remembers us, we receive salvation. We receive hope. We receive the gospel. The desert starts to change. But if that thing doesn't happen, I've seen many big heads and bright brains and beautiful people. And from my eyes, I say, oh wow. But spiritually, I know they are dead. And that's what we said last week, Pastor said, if you see someone in a suit and you see a beggar, which one is it easy for you to go and share the gospel? Because in God's eyes, without the Lord, they are both spiritually dead. So our responsibility is to all. If God had to see us from the outside, if God had to see me from the outside, I won't be saved today. I don't deserve. I don't deserve. It's because of His, in His mercy, He has remembered me. Wow. That's, that's a miracle. Amen? So He gave us Jesus Christ so we can be saved. He remembered me. He saved me. Not only that, 
He gave me the power of the Holy Spirit. So I can be empowered, empowered in my life to change that desert. And not only that, so I can remember others and empower the desert in others' lives. Amen? And the third point is that in the end times, it's important to remember Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. I give you two scriptures to find. One of them is 2 Timothy chapter 2 and Matthew chapter 24. Uh, sorry, second Timothy chapter two verse eight. The verse before from verse four from verse three is about enduring hardship. Endure hardship with us like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. Similarly, if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not receive the victor's crown unless he competes according to the rules. The hard-working farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I'm saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. Here, Paul is writing to Timothy about enduring hardships, about running the race, about, about the plan of God in his life to stay true to what the Lord has called him to do. And then verse 8, how? How do I stay true? Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. Remember the Lord. Amen? Amen. Because it's impossible for me to run the race without the Lord. And the other one is Matthew chapter 24. From verse 7 to verse 13, sorry, to verse 14, if someone can read it aloud, there's a good auditor. Emma, you are ready to read? Okay. Okay. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of the birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. And you will be hated by all because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith, and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. Amen. Remembering the Lord is not an easy task, but it is the only way. And uh, this morning, I, I was just reflecting this week, you know, somebody said, Sister Marcel, I've never heard your testimony, how you came to the Lord. <laughs> and in her eyes, I, I could see, how, how did you? Because like um, our brother was saying, he comes from a Roman Catholic country. It, it is very hard to imagine uh, even Maltese people coming to the Lord because of the, of the roots um, in our land. And the desert, the picture of the desert really, really um, attracts me just because I believe that we I'm saying Maltese I'm sure everybody else feels this but as Maltese Christians I believe we know what the desert is the spiritual desert it was really a desert growing up in Malta for me as a child I'm sure nobody was here except Manuel and Kenneth <laughs> 
So you don't know how Malta was in the 1970s, probably. Probably Deren was visiting from time to time. But growing up in Malta was a spiritual desert. And getting to know the Lord and coming out of that desert was really a big time miracle for me.